Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. It's always uh, heartening to be with strong women because I believe in one thing that a strong woman, a strong woman actually derives her strength from another strong woman. And having this belief, I thought that. I can't work individually in my own capacity. I have to have my sisters with me so that we can make a greater impact that can surpass the borders and the boundaries of Pakistan. And that's why we are here today as one group of women representing the whole of Pakistan, which we call Amna Nisa. And like I said, Aman no Nisa means, Aman means peace and Nisa means women. So we are, we are women for peace. Uh, we formed Aman Nisa last year, in 2011, with one goal and one objective, that all of us pledge to work for moderating extremism in Pakistan at all levels. Amna Nisa is just one year old, but the women who are the members of Amna Nisa have experience in the field for almost decades. Now. Basically, uh, my profession, I used to be a professor of international politics in one of the universities of Peshawar. And then I thought that there could be many professors like me just using this podium and this classroom, teaching 70, 80, 150 boys every year. I think I need to change my profession. And it was in 2002, after working with 36,000 women counselors in Pakistan, that I recognized and realized the empathy of the women. And I thought that we need to have one voice. So 500 of us came together on 8th of March and we formed Paman Trust. And Paman means promise. We promised that we are going to work for the women and youth and for the motherland that we call Pakistan. And since then, we are working together. So some of the members of Amna Nisa are also the members of Paman Trust. But the other women, like you are the members of uh, this group, uh, have, are very dynamic, have been working in their own fields uh, for almost, I think, like I said, a decade now. That's a very small story of my so Amna Nisa basically works at two levels. One is advocacy that we do with our parliamentarians to include more women in security sector, as well as in policy making when it comes to post-crisis, post-disaster, reconstruction, rehabilitation, and reintegration. Unfortunately, uh, Pakistan had been grappling with the issue of extremism for almost decades. And we can trace this to 1979, when we all became uh, sort of the, the players in the war, which was not our war. And we are still suffering. We suffer, like Madam just said, 35,000 of our civilians became the victims. They were killed. 3,500 of our military personnel are being killed in this war. Like I always say, it's not our war. So people like us, who had been working in other countries, for other countries, for the region, to build confidence between the region, the, the regional players between the different countries, to work for peace in South Asia when extremism was not knocking, it was hitting every one of us in the country, and particularly the region that I belong to, Khabar Bukhtunkhwa, and Federal Administered Tribal Area, where every Friday, people would dare to come, go out uh, for prayers and would never like to go out on, on Fridays because of the 
suicidal attacks, particularly on the holy places like mosques. So the uncertainty, the fear, definitely had a psychological and emotional impact, impact on everyone living in that community and society. We could not sit back and we thought of developing a program which we call Let's Live for Peace. And while working with the boys, because we started with the youth in the University of Khyber Bukhtunkhwa, they were given the assignment to go back to their communities, particularly the conflict ridden areas of Khwata, Federal Administrative Tribal Area, and Khyber Bukhtunkhwa. And they came back with the stories that we never thought that we could be addressing. So we, we started working with the mothers, with the community uh, women, and we developed a larger program by engaging and involving not only the women in the community, the youth in the community, but also the boys who were vulnerable or who were extremists. And we tried to develop a program for them, which we call the de-radicalization of youth. And through that program, we were able to transform and de-radicalize, personally, 79 boys uh, who were under different orientation of extremism. Seven of them were suicidal. And some of them were like, either making societal jackets, so I just said they were in different stages. And Amnon Nisha basically is trying to reach out through the community outreach initiative to those people who could be vulnerable and who could be transformed. So that's a community outreach initiative. We also, through our community outreach, we are trying to have a discourse. We do have dialogue and discourse to different stakeholders that include not only the religious scholars, but the religious preachers, whom we call the mullah in the community. Uh, the schools, the religious schools, we call madrasa. We also are trying to introduce reforms in our education sector and our media. Because we believe that education is the key <coughs> to transformation. And the introduction of peace education could answer some of the ill that is prevailing in our society today, and which has put us on the path of extremism. So we are trying to work out, not only with the government departments, but also with the religious uh, schools, that is madrasa, to intru introduce peace education as a part of the curriculum. Why we are here? It was uh, the group, like I said, it's only one year old. And we just thought that we are doing advocacy at the national level. But we do need to take this up somewhere at the international level. And we are very grateful to the US Embassy in Pakistan that they have funded this visit of the 11 women. And the basic objective of this coming over to the United States was to act as a bridge between the people of Pakistan and the people of the United States. And try to address some of the misconceptions regarding Pakistan, the misperception that exists, and also try to address the issues uh, that have been raised in the context of Pakistan from time to time, unfortunately, in the US media. The, f the second objective was to interact with the policy makers and shapers, both at the Hill and in the State Department, to make them understand the reality, the real situation in Pakistan. 
and the role that women are playing in moderating extremism. And I believe that we have left an impact both at the Hill and in the State Department. And the outcome, I would say, the success of the, of the five days long visit was that on the last day we received an invitation from uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. She wanted to meet us. So we had a very brief meeting with her and of course, uh, even if it was for a fourth of session, she extended her support to initiatives like Amna Nessa. Yeah. Yeah. We have been trying to um, address this issue uh, of extremism in Pakistan. But the major thing, I think uh, one of our achievement is that we have put our message across. The communities in the United States and as well as, like I said, um, the public, uh, the, 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 of course, the, at the Hill and in the, in, the, in, the, in the government departments as well. Um, the forums that we were invited to, they were really, uh, I would say, they responded very really positively. And some of the misconceptions that they, they share with us that they, they always have a lot of like, you know, misconceptions and uh, misperception regarding Pakistan and the Pakistani community and how come women can play a role. And when they saw that in practical form and shape, that these women are there on ground, these women are there talking to the extremist leaders, these women are there trying to de-radicalize. The boys, through mobilizing the mothers, and this is a very, ch I mean, all of us sitting in this room, the 11 of us are, I think, have taken up a very challenging task on our shoulders. And we are not only working for the peace in our community, for social cohesion in our community. If you think over it, we are trying to work for peace in the world. And we need support and recognition from women like you. Thank you very much.